When I say the word entry frag, and most of you probably think, teammate flashes him in, he goes in first, tries to get some kills. If he doesn't, teammates trade him. Apex, however, does a lot more than this. He's not just that kind of entry fragger. He's um very sporadic and almost random in a way that completely catches the CTs off guard. So you'll see in this clip here, I mean, that's pretty standard. Um, good angle, that's just him out aiming the player. But this next move he makes here, he runs through Z connector with his knife out and just completely catches Garrett off guard. Like, you might be, like, who in their right mind does that? Like, you might be thinking that's not fundamental CS, but having a player like this on your team can make a huge difference. Um, just this random element, we saw it in Fnatic with JW and stuff like that, and Apex brings this to G2, and that's one of the reasons he's able to be so effective. But also one of the reasons, as with most entry fraggers, his numbers are a bit up and down, because obviously this kind of playstyle won't always work, but it's, um, it's definitely good, as I said, to have someone like this on your team because the CTs always have to be aware. I mean, stuff like that. Get right's not aware. He just presumes like no one's going to be crazy enough to come through Z Connector. But he's wrong. Apex is. Now you see, even when teams work that out, like I'm sure NIP know Apex plays like this. They can't concentrate on it too much. Like, they have to be aware of it, but they also have to concentrate on the rest of the game, which is why it's so effective. Now, another thing Apex is really good at is using his utility. He doesn't only die with a lot of utility on him, and he's very good at flashing, modeling, and creating his own picks. And you'll see two of them here. So this one here, very good self-flash here. Gets Oscar just enough to blind him for a second, and then get the kill. And again here, you'll see he got a 3v3 on the A site. So you might be thinking, okay, uh, he's going to hold this down. So he mollies off truck, so he knows it's hard to get peeked from there. And he just peeks on just, like, you might be thinking a 3v3, shouldn't he just play these teammates? But he's not going to always do that. And this is another thing I'm talking about, this random element that really helps his team out. Maus and any team playing G2 can't be fully comfortable setting up for a retake because Apex could just appear at any moment and peek you. And you'll see again with that clip there, he's thrown his Molotov truck to create his uh, own opening to go aggressive like that. He didn't just peek out super wide where he could get a double peek from truck as well. He's actually uh, quite smart and, and pretty methodical actually. So another thing with these aggressive pushes by Apex is he gains a lot of information. So even if he goes down these clips and not gets kills, he can um, very easily gain a lot of information as to where the CTs are, where they're rotating in. And again, you'll see he's pushed into the Z connector um, unnoticed seemingly. Look at this, he, he opens up, whiffs a little bit, but he, he ends up he ends up opening the B site for them pretty much and, and Taz is um, yeah, dealt with. And you'll see here, it's information on this retake. Again, he's just charging off here. It's a 4v4, doesn't, doesn't care. I mean, he gets both the kills, um, but even if he goes down then in a 3v4, if they know two players are flanking in from B main, that's a lot of information gained for them, and yeah, they can definitely yeah, deal with that situation, adjust accordingly with their positioning, and busy Apex is just destroying everyone in this round, so that's unnecessary. But uh, hopefully you understand what I mean by that and get what I mean by this information grabbing and how his team's able to adjust. So one thing I mentioned quickly before was Apex is very good at not wasting utilities, very good at um, helping his teammates out. You see in this situation, this is just good uh, research, is he knows he's probably going uh, through a smoke, a lot of entry fraggers will just go straight out as the smoke fades, that's just the way executes tend to work. So in this situation, he knows all the lineups, he's done the homework um, to throw out his utility, and you see he's only got one flash left, and even if he goes down here, he's not wasting a whole lot of utility. Obviously this was a full execute, so this is something they've probably practiced going through a smoke. But as I said, um, often the entry frag is going to be close to the entryway that are smoked off and he, he's done his homework and he's helping his team out. Another thing Apex does is he often actually starts off as a more of a support player if they want to go middle on cash. You'll be the one that mollies out vent, you'll be the one that uh, flashes over, um, what is it, over boost for his teammates to push out. And he uses utility that way and then later in the round when he's ready to get aggressive, I like those first two clips where he wants to just push in um, maybe dry or something, try and create an opening. He doesn't have all this utility his way, so he's already, he's already done it, he's already um, thrown it all to help his teammate uh, get an advantage in another part of the map at a different time in the round. So I'm just going to cover a couple of um, individual or smaller things G2 do that uh, work out in the big picture to help him out in the long run, then I'll look at more um, your traditional style of entry fragging. See here, it's a bit of a mistake by Disco Dolphin, I mean, he um, just sprays through the smoke randomly and Apex is at a punishing him, you see he's not scared at all uh, to catch him off guard. Um, and yeah, just, just a smart play, he knows his recall is probably going to be up a little bit and he's going to have the advantage if he just peeks out wide and tries to get that pick. Obviously it could be a bait for maybe an AWP sitting behind him. But Apex isn't scared of that. I mean, he wants to take these openings. That's his job in the team, and he does it very well. Something else G2 likes to do is they'll often boost Apex back up into vent once they take checkers and control. And like in this situation here where um, the other team is rotating in because they're, they're pretty confident it's going to be an execute from G2, you can often catch a rotator off guard or, yeah, just them rotating into vents. And you'll see here that's exactly what happens. Um, and it's a very strong situation to be in. You see 
Triss isn't really expecting it. Apex uh, misses a few shots, but he's still able to get the kill in. And yeah, it ends up uh, working quite well. They do this, um, I'd say, semi-frequently. It's not every round, but they'll they'll do it every now and then. And then just continue watching this because it's this pretty good entry. You'll see again, he's using his Molotov quite effectively and his utility. Now he's pushing out. He knows where he's most likely to get shot from. And that's, that's pretty standard entry fragging right there. But yeah, the main thing to take away from that is that vent boost can be very good for um, catching players off guard when rotating. Something pretty basic, but I just want to point out quickly, is if you have one of the SMGs in these eco rounds, go out first, like Apex is here, you'll see again, it's, it's no fear again, but again, he's, he's out here first, him and Shrox are just a CZ, and you see they're the ones taking control. Again, Apex didn't really buy too many nades here, because he knows he might go down. You'll see, even though he gets taken down here, he gets all the information they need, there's only three players alive, he sees two highway, now his teammates know where they all are, and they can deal with them quite easily. He's not pushing with an AK. And yeah, this seems to be Apex role on the team, he's often the guy who picks up the SMG, which is why I included it in this video. So in this round here, you'll see they actually uh, smoke themselves off to do the same execute you saw a bit earlier. Again, Apex knowing these um, lineups and stuff, and he's not, like, he's not worried, he's not going to move. You see, that's a good thing there. When he's flashed off, he's not moving and trying to give away information. Mollies himself out, and you look here, when he enters the site, he only concentrates on certain areas. He's not trying to clear out everything, he doesn't worry about fence. All he's worried about is boost, and then he's worried about wrapping onto site and getting control of it. And he does that quite well. Luckily, he's able to hide from the flash. So now you're probably thinking, what if he's not at the, what if there's a CT at the angle that our Apex isn't looking at? And you see as he jumps through, he's jumping through to the right, but body's right with him checking the other side. And again, Apex doesn't look at fence. He's wrapping around to site. Um, then if Shox is there, they actually all get blinded up. It was actually a pretty good flash. But you'll see the idea was for Shox to check fence. And this is just part of being an entry fragger. Going in first like Apex is, he can't check every single angle there is. It's just too slow and it's not going to work out. So as you say, he jumps through. Um, he doesn't worry about for forklift. Our body's looking at forklift in this situation. And that's really part of these executes going onto a team like this. Is he has to trust his teammates to get his back or to trade him if he does get shot in the back from forklift. And yeah, that's the fundamentals of being an entry fragger in these uh, execute kind of situations. Apex is definitely a very aggressive player. This um like random pushing is because a very unpredictable player is, is part of the reason he fits into other teams is having a player like this definitely um, opens up space for a lot of other players in the team. And you see he's able to get frags from it. Other times he will of course go down. I of course only show you the good situations. But you be aware he does go down a lot. Um it's a very up and down kind of role. You see his numbers aren't the most consistent in the world, but definitely a player like this is needed in a lot of teams. That's what makes him so interesting and one of G2, one of the most interesting teams to watch. So that's it guys for Apex. Uh, make sure to subscribe if you're not, and I'll catch you in the next one.